we have a fantastic guest for you today, author Chris Michelle. The Red Chair Experience is his newest book. He is also the founder of CM Consulting. Hey, Chris, how are you today? Oh, I'm doing well, Heather. Thank you. How are you today? I'm really glad to have you on here. I think this is going to be a, a fantastic conversation. We are going to begin by um, just asking you, what have I missed? It's not about me anymore, right? It's it's kind of it's it's trying to figure out how do we help other people, and I got that bug and and just continued to run with it, and that was part of the reason for the book, and we'll talk about that later. But mm -hmm. that was really what came out of this whole thing was I'm tired of working for myself. I'm tired of of being you know and working for myself, meaning it's all about me. It's not about me. It's really about other people, right? And learning that was kind of a huge light bulb moment for me, if you will. You know, I wasn't planning on going down this way, but because you're bringing it up, um, that shift is what um, these humanity moments that I talk about has, right. has everything to do with that. Was there something that happened or was just a, a slow realization? Like, do you? So, I, I mean, I look at a lot of my career and, and, you know, when you start out in sales, a lot of people get into sales because it's all about me, because, you know, it's it's a way for us to shine and a way for us to be in the spotlight and do those kind of things. Right. And and I'm not saying everybody's like that, but a lot of people get into sales for that very reason. I got into sales because I didn't want to go into PR. I didn't want to go into human re uh, resources. I didn't want to be a speech writer. I, I learned how to talk in college. I I graduated with a degree in speech communications. Mm -hmm. And so this was, you know, somebody mentioned this and I was like, well, sure, I would love to do that. And I just naturally jumped right into that, that opportunity. Well, what happened was I was pretty good at picking things up and then I could transfer that information. Right. And the transference of information is huge, especially with people. It doesn't matter what your career path is, whether it's sales, whether marketing, uh, you know, human resources, doesn't matter you get the opportunity to pick up on what other people share. And so it, there wasn't one particular thing, but what happened over time is I just saw this opportunity to share with others and I kind of hit my stride. I mean, early on in my career, my, in my HVAC career, I, I kind of, I became the number one salesperson. I, I did everything that I kind of wanted to do, but then, you know, there was just, it's like there was something just continuing missing. I was going through the the motions, right? And I'm doing air quotes, right? But it, I'm I was going through the motions, and I didn't realize it until that point where I was like, "Oh, this is just." Ugh. It made me sick to my stomach, realizing that I kind of um, I'd lost that fire, that passion, that desire to go and and do these things. Right. I I think, um, and I ask this of a lot of people: What can I do to contribute to what you're doing? And it really catches people off guard because they're like, "What do you mean contribute?" So we we too often get caught up in this in this how can i help you yeah. right yeah and when i say how can i help you that means you have a problem uh, at least in my eyes you have a problem and yeah. i can help you right i can oh, i can yeah. give you answers instead when i say how can i contribute it's like oh wow wait a minute contribute that's di that's way different than helping me right I because there's not a problem but what are his skill sets? What are his abilities? What are his, what, what are the things that he brings to the table? And so it really kind of shifts the mindset into thinking, how can I contribute? Um, and it's, it's almost collaborative, right? It's almost to the point where, oh, wait a minute. He wants to contribute to what I'm doing. He doesn't want to help me per se. Would you like to share something, a, a challenge, a fear, a difficult time that you learned a lesson from that you are really grateful for? I got asked this a lot this weekend and, and you and I briefly talked about this um, just a few minutes ago. So this weekend, I got to go to a charity event that was um, being held in honor of my brother. My brother passed away three years ago and we created this charity golf event because he was really passionate about two um, um, charities there in his local area and where he lived. And so um, we we've created this um, golf outing in his honor and so it, 
reflecting on that, you know, you when asking the question, what is it that brought me from, you know, that, that kind of stood out that brought me from fear to fire? My brother's death, um, because it was a suicide and there was no note, there was no nothing, there was no closure, right? But there was no real way to kind of um, bring all this to a head. But that really gave me pause, right? And three years ago in my life, it was one of those where I kind of went, oh my, you know, now what am I doing with my life? He passed away six months later, the pandemic started. I started writing a book. I started my own business 12 months later, right? I mean, uh, boom, boom. There's just this domino effect, right? That happened. And it's it's been this amazing journey. And, but that one thing that I'm grateful for was just this wake up call, right? This, just this uh, um, awareness to be able to say, hey, wait a minute, what are you doing with your life, right? What are you pursuing and how are you helping other people? I know that it's going to have a lot of meaning and impact for people out there. Chris, thank you again and have a beautiful day. Thank you, Heather. You too. If you enjoyed this week's Humanity Moment, be sure to subscribe. You'll find the link below.